Morning. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Hey, sorry, man. I have, do I look ready? <laughs> really. Um, welcome. Glad you're all here. Um, guess we're going to have good weather next week, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, right. I like snow, so. <laughs> all right, well, let's start our worship. Let's all stand. Let's start praising God. Amen. 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 Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Joe, is that right? Yeah. Did, did I get that right? I was like, Joe or Greg? I was thinking it was Joe. 
So it's going to have open heart surgery tomorrow. So so pray for for Joe, um, Ashley's dad now, and then continue to pray tomorrow as well. Sound good? Yeah. Are y'all ready to praise Jesus some more through yeah. songs? Yeah. You know, I was looking out the window today. Can I just be uh, transparent for a moment? Is that okay? Yeah. I was looking out the window today in my office, and it was 9.15, and I was like, man, God, I remember when, when people were just poured in this place at 9.15. You remember them days? Pre-COVID, right? And, and, and I was like, and I was kind of just going down memory lane in my mind, and, 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 and I heard God say, yeah, but you know who's here now. Yeah. And, and, and so we need to come to the realization that maybe we will be a smaller group when this is all over, but we can be a stronger group. Amen. 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 You give me a stronger group, that's the group I want to be part of. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Because, because our strength will attract, and, and, and it's going to be a slow process, but trust me. We will get there again, I believe. Amen? Amen. COVID or no COVID? We're, we're, we're going to kick COVID in, in, the, in the can, right? It's getting there. It's getting better. Continue your prayers. As, as, as COVID is going away, slowly, but it's going away. So continue to pray that that happens, that God does that, and that, that uh, we all um, will get better physically, but most importantly, spiritually. Amen? You are here. You are a strong person. You need to be commended for that. And I think Jesus commends you for that. We commend you for that. And together, when we gather together, whether it's a large number or a small, a small number, His presence is with us. What more can we ask for? Amen, church? So let's stand on our word prayer. We're going to sing some more. So we're going to sing loud, right? All right, let's stand. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Father, your presence is with us in a real and mighty way. We thank you for that, God. Father, all the prayer requests that we've had this past week, those that we've mentioned today, and those that may not even be mentioned, Lord, we, we are asking for your, for your presence, for your touch on families, on people, God. And Lord, we love you. And we want to honor you today. And may the, may, may the, the sounds that we sing and the, and the words that we say, God, may it be pleasing to you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood.
would you be in agreement? Would you, would you raise your hand if God is good? Has it been good to you this week? Two hands, some people are good. good. Kids, you are going to head out to the yeah, Kansas Church today. You can head out that way. I love the snow and whenever it does yes. snow and, and stuff, you know, covers up all the ugly mm -hmm. of everything. And it's just like, you know, when God saved us, He just washes our sins and lives. And it's yes. like, when you see that, you remember again what He did for us. Absolutely. I love snow too, especially when I'm inside and it's nice and warm. And maybe there's a big pot of chili on the stove, amen. And and, and you just kinda like, isn't that nice? But then when when you have to get out in it, so 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 if you all have to get out in it, I guess we're gonna get some more snow, but that that we will enjoy watching and hopefully maybe we won't have to get out in it that much. I don't know. Kids, maybe you'll have a learn e learning day tomorrow. We don't know, or maybe there's gonna be snow day. I vote snow day. You guys <laughs> That's right, it's President's Day tomorrow. Wow. So never mind. Enjoy your snow day. Parents, enjoy your snow day, right? We're going to be continuing in our, our series in the book of James. I hope that you have been, been enjoying the book of James. I like I like James, like I told you before. And, and our series is kind of called Be Mature. Is, is the, I guess if you want to title our series uh, and, 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 and we've been talking about discipleship because it's a process of becoming like Jesus like the water forms that big rock there and then it shapes and we allow Jesus to do that to our lives and, and one thing we'll be in James chapter 3 we will find that that, that he tackles the tongue is one of the things that he, that he tackles in this chapter for us and, and, and specifically he talks about taming the tongue it's hard to do, isn't it? Every time I read this chapter, my mind, oh, my mind always goes back to what happened to me when I was in the dentist chair, getting my teeth cleaned. Who likes to go to the dentist? If, if you do, you are definitely in the minority. But, but I know one time I was in a dentist uh, a chair getting, my, getting my, my teeth cleaned, and the dental hygienist was there. And then she was, she was cleaning teeth. She had the sharp instruments, you know, inside my mouth, right? Cleaning on your teeth. And... And, and I'm constantly telling my tongue, stay on this side of my mouth because she's currently working on that side. So I kept saying, tongue, stay over here. Tongue, stay over here. Stay over here. And, and, and out of nowhere, all of a sudden, my, my tongue did a dart to the other side of my mouth and right back. And, and, and she nicked, or, or more likely probably my tongue hit one of her sharp tools that she was working on in my mouth. And... And, and, and she, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And she's wiping the blood off my tongue. And, and I, I told her, not while she had my tongue in her, in her hand, but, but, but I told her, I said, you know what? I said, it's not your fault. I was on purpose. I was telling my tongue to stay on the other side of my mouth. And she said something to me that, that, that I've never forgot. She, she said this to me. She goes, she goes, the tongue seems to do whatever it wants. The tongue seems to have a brain of its own. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I was saying, tongue, stay over here. Stay away from the sharp instruments. Let, let, let this lady do her job. It just took that one boom. The tongue seems to do whatever it wants. And James, he's talking about the tongue in chapter 3. And, 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 and this is what James tells us. So we're going to be in, and we'll read verses 2 through 12. Um, you can open your books, your, your Bible, your, your phone, wherever. I obviously have it up here on the screen as well. Um, but this is what it says. We all, and, and because we had just said this in Sunday school, i got to say, we all, i got to say, say all. Say all. <laughs> we heard that in Sunday school today. That, that, I thought, I've heard that somewhere. That's good. We all stumble in many ways, and we can say amen to that, right? James says, anyone who is never at fault of what they say is perfect. Remember, James, when he talks about perfect in, in his book here, he talks about, he talks about man, something being complete, something being whole. <coughs> it says, uh, anyone who is never at fault of what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, James says, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large, they are driven by and driven by strong winds. They are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. 
He says, likewise, just like the bit in the horse's mouth and just like the rudder on the ship, he says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. But it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, James says. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It's corrupts, it corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire. And, and James says, get this, and, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, James is saying, fellow believers, this should not be you. We should not come to church and, and, and praise God on Sunday and, and, and Monday curse our boss at work. He's saying that it shouldn't be that way. Brothers and sisters, that's you and me. So this should not be. Then he goes on to say, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce, produce fresh water. The tongue is difficult to tame. Would you agree with that? James is very practical. He, he's, he's lived life. He, he understands. He's like, he's like, guys, I get you. The tongue is hard to, to, to lasso, if you will, right? To tame it. As a matter of fact, James tells us it is humanly impossible to tame your tongue. It just takes that moment to get in the way. That's it. Yet within these, within these verses, James also tells us, and I believe that, uh, that, uh, that he explains to us that the tongue can be tamed by God. And so we're going to break this down, okay? Right here at the very beginning, he says that we stumble in many ways, and we're like, yeah, I'm with you, James. We get that. We understand that, don't we? And, and, and he says that's human tendency. We fall a lot. Even in our words that we say. He also you know, talked about stumbling words. Does anybody ever stumble in their words? I got my hand up too. <laughs> we, we stumble in our words sometimes, don't we? Uh, so sometimes we, we say something and then, then I'm like, why did I just say that? I can't believe I said that. Have you ever said that to yourself? Or maybe to someone else? After, after someone says something, you turn to me and I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> right? We've all been there, haven't we? He's telling, James is telling us, he says, if you can control your tongue, if you can control your words, you will be perfect. You, that, that, means, that means in your walk with Jesus, you are complete, you are mature. He also says that if we control our tongue, we can control our entire body. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? And he, and he goes on to gives us three different things here that he, that he says three, three ways to help us to understand how to control our tongue. First of all, he says no one can tame the human tongue. It can't be done. Now, now, now before we uh, declare that it's hopeless and there's nothing we can do, I want to look at exactly what James is telling us here. I believe that he is telling us and he establishing the fact that, that hey guys, to control your human tongue cannot be done by human endeavor. No matter, no matter how hard I told my tongue to stay on the right side of my mouth, what did it do? It went against my will and went to the left side when I was sitting in that dentist chair. And that's what James is telling us. No, no, humanly, you cannot control, you cannot tame your tongue. Humanly impossible. Gee, thanks, James. <laughs> right? And he gives us some, some illustrations to back that up, doesn't he? He talks about, about, about the bit in the horse's mouth. Um, I don't ride horses much, but I enjoy it. We don't have horses at the, out back in the parsonage. The CLT said no to that. 
I never ask. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you go on vacation, sometimes, and maybe you can ride a horse. You know, the, the, that's always fun. And, and I had a couple horses growing up, and, and, and high ho silver away, and all that good stuff. And, and, and but it's fun to to ride horses, isn't it? And for some reason, when I go to those places, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the only one here like this. But if I go to those places, you know, where, where you rent that horse and you all walk in line down the trail. They always give me the biggest one. I'm not sure what that means. They always give me a big horse. But it's still, it's a big horse, but the, the bit in its mouth is not very big, is it? And, and I, I, I like the horses that, that you know, you, you hold the reins and you just kind of go like this and they go wherever you want them to. They're trained, don't they? Or you, you can turn the entire animal with that little bit. That, that is a small piece of equipment, but yet it's significant has a lot of power. James, he also talks about the, the rudder on the ship and, and, and you see the you see the rudder right here? You can see that, can't you? You see how big the boat is, right? How that's a big boat. He says, hey, he says, he says the rudder compared to the rest of the boat, it, it is very small, but yet it's significant. Very significant. With, the, with that rudder, which is small compared to the, to the ship, the, the, that ship will go whatever direction the pilot wants it to go, to be able to move. The pilot can navigate. And he also talks about a small fire, doesn't he? A spark. And, and he tells us that, that, that a very small fire, even, even, even just a tiny spark, he says it, it can ignite a great force and destroy the fire. There is incredible power and significance in all three of those. With a bit, we can control a large animal. With a small rudder, you can control a large ship. With a small spark, you can burn down an entire forest and destroy it. He's telling us, he says, says, it's that way with the tongue. He, said, he says, it's very small, but it's very powerful. It's very significant. And James tells us, if a person can control that, they can control the whole body. And James says, a person that can do that would be perfect. Anyone in here perfect? Put my hand right back down. We're not perfect, are we? So, so the first thing that James tells us, he says, hey, when, when I talk about taming t the tongue, I'm going to give you the good news right out the bat. You can't do it. He says it's humanly impossible by your own strength to control, to tame your own tongue. Oh, wow. Thanks, James. Oh, but there's more, he says. He says, the same thing, he says, the, the, oh, by the way, he says, the tongue is a, is a fire. And guess what he says? It's set on hell. It's set on fire by hell. The tongue is. I think what James is telling us here is, is just like that spark that destroys an entire forest. Our words can destroy people. Your words are powerful. And, and I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but once that word's out there, especially in, in, in today's world, there's no pulling it back, is there? <laughs> once, well, once you hit send on that email, once you hit post on that social media, it's out there. Once I hit send on that text, it's out there. And, 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 and at this point, it's going to be impossible for me to bring it back. And, and what we say, what we post, what, what we think, it can destroy other people. Just like that small spark can destroy an entire forest. James, he also tells us, he, said, he says that, that, the, that the tongue, it corrupts the entire body, the whole body. It's a world of evil. Moral unrighteousness <clears throat> comes from the sun. Just as the rudder affects the ship and the way it goes, and, and, and just as the bit affects the, the horse, and, 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 and so the tongue affects the body. It brings corruption, James, James tells us. It brings, it, it, it defiles the entire body. Our little tongue does that. That's what James tells us. 
James, he, he not only says that does the tongue corrupt, but, but he tells us that, that it is set on fire by hell. And, 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 and he says, he says it, it sets the course for your entire life. And, and when, when, when your tongue is untamed, which, by the way, you can't do, James just told us. When, when, that, when that tongue leads your life, it's going to destroy you. That's what, that's what James is telling us. In other words, he's saying the, the, the tongue it, it is not, it's not only a physical part of the body. It can, it, it, it can affect the physical part. We understand that. But it also it's a spiritual problem now. It's, it affects our spirit. It, it affects who we are. And, 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 and James says your fire is set. Your tongue is set on fire by hell. Man. I think what James is doing is he's reminding us that all bad, all evil comes from the devil. Every bit of evil comes from the devil. And that the devil is the source of the evil that's in our tongues. No wonder we no wonder we, we can't control our own tongue, right? I, I, I mean, in our own strength, we are incapable of overcoming evil. We cannot do it on our own. I know right now you're probably thinking, gee, Pastor Doug, thanks for the pick me up. <laughs> the, 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 thanks for the encouraging word this morning. I'm going to go out and conquer the world. Oh, wait, there's more. James is not telling us about all the good things yet. So, so far, he's, he's told us that, that, that no one can tame the tongue. Congratulations, you will not be able to tame, to tame your tongue. Oh, and by the way, he says the tongue is a fire. And, and guess what? Your, your tongue, my tongue, James says, is, is, is set on fire by the fires of hell. But he's not done yet. He tells us that the tongue is an unruly evil that is full of poison. James is saying not only is, 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 it, is, is the tongue evil, but he says it's an unruly or, or a restless evil. It is a kind of which is not merely passive, but no, he says this evil, it is active. It's actively on the attack. It's a deadly poison. you get bit by a snake that's poisonous, you have that poison going through your system, don't you? And what do you have to do? A lot of times to survive, you've got to get the antidote. Right? James, he tells us the, the tongue is full of poison. As a matter of fact, Romans 3 tells us the poison of vipers is on their lips. It can destroy things we say can destroy people's lives. No one can tame the tongue. It defiles, it corrupts the whole body. Here's what James is trying to tell us, I think. I, th I think what, what, what James is trying to tell us here is, 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 that, is that the significance and the influence of the tongue. It's great. It's a little member of the body, isn't it? But man, is it powerful. James is saying it's so powerful, it's just like that little bit in that horse's mouth. And, and, and you can control that large animal. It, 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 it's, it's so powerful that the tongue is, he says, it, it's like that, that, that rudder, which is which which may be big, but compared to the big ship that it's on, it's a very small piece of equipment. And he says that rudder can control the entire ship. And, and he says, you know, he says, the, the tongue is so small, it's just something little, but, but yet so is the spark. And, and James says, you know what, with that spark, you can destroy an entire great forest. James, he says, you know, he says, uh, human beings, mankind, have pretty much tamed about everything there is. All kinds of animals. You, you, you think about the animals that, that, that mankind, that, that we as humans have tamed. Reptiles, birds, even the sea creatures are ta are, are, have been tamed, have, have, been, have, have been put under the control, if you will, of the human being. That, that they are able to, to train it and to teach it and, and to make it do what it wants them to do. But he says you can never tame your own tongue. 
But James, he also tells us this. You know, he also tells us, hey, he says, he says, guys, he says, we need to be righteous before God. He says, he says, blessings should flow freely from our mouths, not cursing. So, so James, you're telling me that that my tongue is even. That's what he's. That's what he's telling us at, at, at the beginning. He's telling us that, that, hey, so my tongue is evil, and, and I won't be able to tame it. Yeah, that's right. On my own. He goes, yep, that's right. But yet, you, you, you later on, you are telling me that, 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 that blessings and curses should not come from the same mouth. Yeah, he's saying that. What do you think he's doing? Is he contradicting himself here? Sound like he could be, but I don't think he is. I think what, John, well, what James is doing is he's pulling us, he's pointing us, Back to God. He, he's saying, you know what? In, in the human realm, you will never be able to control your tongue. It can't be done. It's impossible. But he says, in the spiritual realm, let's take this deeper, he says. Remember, Jesus always wants us to go deeper. He says, in the spiritual realm, guess what? We have someone who is perfect. We have someone who is powerful. Who is right. Who is just. Who is perfect. And that's God. So you see James is saying. Here is the key to control in your tongue. He says there is good news. We know someone who is more powerful than, than the, even the fires of hell. Name is God. And he says, if you allow God through the Holy Spirit to come into your life and then you give your entire, your complete life to Him, He, through the Holy Spirit, can help you tame your tongue. Which humanly you can't do. But Jesus, being perfect, can do. And, and, and James is also telling us, he says, you know, just like I said, hey guys, when 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 you when you can control your tongue, your entire body will follow. Just like that bit in the horse's mouth. Just like that rudder on the ship. When, when God has got a control of you and you allow him to control your tongue. I've told you all before, the closer I get to God, the more he tells me to shut up. Sometimes we just need to listen to that, don't we? God, give me the words to say. He says, I'm going to give you exactly what to say. Is it that important that, that, that my opinion need, needs to be heard? That, that I'm willing to destroy someone else? Is it that important that, 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 that on social media I, I need to make my thoughts known because that person is completely wrong? And, and, and destroy them and maybe even hurt my reputation? If Jesus has control of my tongue, he has control of my entire body. Get how that works? You see, James is setting this all up to say, guess what, guys? You can't do it on your own, but I know someone who can. And that's Jesus. He teaches us that God is able to do it. Because let me let you in on a little secret. The, the, the taming of the tongue, it's not a physical problem. Because it can't be done. Taming of the tongue is a spiritual problem. I need to allow Jesus, Holy Spirit, to do that work for me. And James had, has told us in, in chapter 1, he said, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. God, how, how can I control my tongue? God's going to say, give it to me. We've got to be able to do that. God is perfect. And he alone can control our tongues. And remember, James says, once again, I'm going to repeat this again because it's important and you know, we need to understand this. James says, says that only a perfect person can control their tongue. And such a person not only control their tongue, but he says can control their entire being. So if I let the perfect one control my tongue, then God can control my entire being. I 
think that's what James is getting at. For us here. Since God is the only one who's perfect, He's the only one that can control my tongue. And as powerful as God is, He won't do it unless you allow Him. Isn't that amazing how that works? The, the one who created us says, I'm not going to force it on you. But you can't do it on your own. That's what James tells us, and we understand that. We believe that. And Jesus says, but I can. I can control your tongue. I, I, I can make it to where, to, to, where, to, where you, to where you slip up a whole lot less with your tongue. You don't want to destroy nobody. I understand that. Allow Jesus to come in and to do that work in you. That's our only solution. Our only solution, according to James, and I happen to believe it, in, in, in taming our tongue, our only solution is to go to the one who's perfect. Amen, church? It reminds me of, of Psalm 19 where it says, Let the words of my mouth. Don't you like that? Let the words of my mouth. Let my tongue be tamed by you, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation on my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, may the words I say, may the words I type, may, may, may the words I post be pleasing to you. And may the intention behind those words, what's in my heart, may it be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Why? Because, God, you are my rock. You are the one that I stand on. And, God, you're my redeemer. No one else has been able to pay that price except you. Discipleship. Allowing the Holy Spirit to, to mold us and to make us more and more into the image and to the likeness of Jesus. Taming the tongue, James hits the nail on the head. It's important. You can build people up. You can allow you can allow God to put that bit in your mouth, so to speak, air close, and lead you around. Or you can try to do it on your own and be, be that spark and set that great forest on fire. Destroy things. I know you. You know me, and I, I think we're all in agreement that, that we want to allow God to tame our tongue because we can't do it on our own. Would you agree with that, church? He can do it. With man, they say it's impossible. With God, all things are impossible. The next time you're sitting in a dentist chair, <laughs> think about that tongue. The, the next time you're getting ready to speak, say, Holy Spirit, is, is what I'm getting ready to speak, is it going to build this person up or am I just tearing them down? Is, is it worth what I'm getting ready to say? Because I sure don't want to burn anybody's life down. I don't want to hurt anybody in any way. And allow Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, to tame your tongue and then He can lead your entire Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and, and, and we are talking on the subject about taming the tongue. And, and thank you for James' words of wisdom. Thank you that James tells us that, that we can't do it on our, on our own. And God, some people, we've been trying for so long and we, we can't do it. And James says, I got you. I know exactly what you what you talked about. Because we know that, that James, he wasn't always a believer in his life either. I mean, I mean we, we can't imagine growing up in the same household as Jesus. Being Jesus' brother and, and then not believing in him while he's on this earth. But then when, when, when he did believe in Jesus, we know, God, that, that, that you took hold and Holy Spirit, you, you tamed his tongue, which he couldn't do on his own. And the words that he has given us are, are just amazing words and they're wise words. And, and Father, may we meditate on them today. May, may we chew on these words and, and, and may we understand at a deeper level that we can't do it on our own. But God, 
you are perfect. You are the only one who can help us with our words and, and with what we say, with what we type, with what we post, with what we send. God, but, but may we understand that on, on a new level today. Allow us to submit ourselves to you completely, including the tongue, because, because, because you, have, you have told us through James, God, that, 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 that blessing and cursing should, should not come from the same mouth. We can't say amen and praise God on Sunday and go out and, and curse our neighbors on Monday. It doesn't work that way. We want Jesus to flow out of us. And then the only way we can do that is to allow you, Holy Spirit, to control our tongue. And when you control our tongue, God, it, it, it's like that rudder on the ship. Lord, you can direct our lives and you, you can na navigate us then. Father, there may be people here praying right now. There may be people online praying right now, God. Just say, Lord, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my tongue. God, we know that you can do that. And that's what we are praying today. That, that people are making that decision right now. And we know, God, when that happens, when, when, when we give our, our words to you and our, our tongue to you, God, we know that, that you can direct our life and we will go deeper in you. We know that's what you want more than anything, God. That's what we want. Thank you for that, Lord. God, you're an amazing God. And, 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 and just like James says, you are perfect. We're not. We need your help in this, Father. Give us the strength to allow you to work in us in, in a new and in a real way. May, may, we live, may we leave today a changed person. You change us from the inside out. Control my tongue, I pray, God. And control our tongue. May we pray to you to give us words to say. And, 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 and God, may, may we hear you when, you when you give us those words or when you give us, give us the word of, of just be quiet. Help us to be representatives of you in a new way. Thank you, God, for what you are doing in our lives, in the lives of, of the people of this church, and in the lives of those who, who watch us every week, and, and in the lives of those all around us, God. The, the, those who are looking in, God, may, may they see us, may they hear what we say, and may they be drawn to you through all of that. We love you, God. We lift you high. We worship you right now. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So, go be Jesus to someone this week with your words. Allow Him to control your tongue. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. We love you most importantly. God loves you. You are dismissed.